Steve Adubato. We are, in fact, coming to you from the Agnes Varis NJTV studio in beautiful Newark, New Jersey. It is our honor to introduce uh, two people very committed to public health, particularly for um, children. And this is first Elise Zimmerman, president and CEO of Partnership for Maternal and Child Health of Northern New Jersey, and Dr. Michael Amakia is the chair of the Department of Pediatrics, St. Joseph's Children's Hospital, and the new chair of your organization. That's correct. You know, we've done a whole range of programming, if you will, folks, on the question of ACEs, adverse childhood experiences tied to a larger initiative we're involved in called Right From The Start NJ. You're going to see that website up. Why? Because we want you to look at the previous interviews we've done on adverse childhood experiences. We'll explain it there. And we'll also talk about a whole range of other things we're doing there. So, Elise, let me ask you, define an adverse childhood experience and why it matters so much to people. Many children have had neglect. They've been abused sexually. They've had uh, to live through a difficult divorce. And as a result, the brain, the neurological aspect of their development has been adversely affected. So that's an adverse childhood experience, and it results in one's physical health. Break this down for us, doctor. What are we talking about? What kind of long-term effects so, of ACEs, adverse childhood so experiences? So cardiovascular disease, uh, Twice. Tied to, a, you're, as a, you're a kid, Absolutely. and some, you're, you're abused, you're neglected, whatever happens, right? Connected to? To having an adverse childhood experience. So if you have four adverse childhood experiences, you're twice as likely to have cardiovascular disease, twice as likely to have a stroke, 12 times uh, more likely uh, to attempt a suicide, uh, to have liver disease. Why? To, well, because it's a, a series of, of, of events that happen. Right. So it's toxic stress. So, you know, consider, you know, seeing a bear in the woods. So you have this response that's neurological and that's endocrine, so cortisol in the Going sympathetic your nervous system. Right. And so you, you get this, but if you have a stressor like, like a dysfunctional family life or an abuse, an accumulation... I'm sorry, you're not talking this, about my family, are you? Not at all. I'm a, <laughs> I believe me, the more I read about ACEs, I'm like, how many do you need? In all seriousness, mm. is it fair to say, I'm sorry for cutting you off, yeah. is it fair to say that the vast, a significant percentage of people have experienced at least four adverse childhood experiences, poverty, sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional and mental abuse. Divorce. Divorce, keep going. What else yeah. are we talking about here? Domestic violence. Whole addiction, abuse, a parent mental. is addicted in some way, affects the childhood. Go ahead. Child is, uh, have a parent who's incarcerated. They don't get to see their parent except behind bars. These kind of uh, circumstances are imprinted in the brain, Steve. And as Dr. Lamakia said, they elevate your stress response. And after having so many times of having elevated repetitive. cortisol, repetitive stress again and again, your body shifts. It can no longer endure that toxic stress. So, oh, hold on. Someone says, well, it's in the brain. It's not in the body. You say... It's connected. You can't, dis you can't say they're two different things, right, it's Doctor? both. They're connected, sure. So let's talk about this. Um, again, we talked to the First Lady, uh, Tammy Murphy, about this. Check out our website for the interview we did with Tammy Murphy on the question of adverse childhood experiences. But what I'm curious about is what are we doing here? Mm -hmm. you, you, you and your team are working with healthcare employees to, to look for what? So young children manifest these signs relatively early. So if you have preschool instructors knowing that if a child is consistently isolated, if that child doesn't want to participate in activities, or if that child is uber aggressive, that child may be an outlier. And you have to be able to know those signs and find out from the parents, is everything going well with this child? Yeah, but hold on, let me play devil's advocate. First of all, what are you, what, you're looking for what? You're looking for certain kinds of behavior, doctor? Right, so it could be you know, lack of memory, not doing well in school, having behavioral problems, overreacting uh, to something that appears like a minor stressor. Th those are sort of things okay. that one can encounter. So, in so you room. identify it, but how do you train, whether it's teachers or healthcare workers, to deal with the parents who may, in fact, be the perpetrators of these adverse childhood experiences. That's what's playing in my mind. Yeah, no, I think you have a valid point. I think that you have to know other members of the family. The key, though, is knowing that the child may be in need of someone to turn to. Whether you are a coach of a young child, you can be somebody who they see in nursery school. Children have an uncanny way of being honest. So they will say, look at my arm. And you'll say, what's going on? And you say, well, Daddy twisted it last night. 
And you're asking, we are asking of healthcare workers, of teachers, of, of principals and others who interact with children to frankly go further than they're going right now. That's what it sounds like you're asking, doctor. Right. But it's also about building resilience, right? So one of the things that we've learned is many of us encounter uh, stresses in our, in our daily life, but it's how we react to them uh, that, that's, that's important. So building a nurturing relationship uh, having children have the confidence in being able to communicate uh, with their teachers, with, with others, with adults, having role models, uh, being able to mentor uh, children, uh, this is all also very important. A national phenomenon? Oh, oh, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's Dealing with it nationally? Because I don't, I, is, is this Congress's job? Is it the job of some government agency? Is it society's job? Whose job? Go ahead, Doctor. It's societal, right? Because we can treat the individual but it's more important to sort of prevent many of these things from occurring and having sort of the resources that are available to parents, uh, doing parenting skills education to, to parents, having the ability to have mm -hmm. someone come into the household and, and to reestablish some good dynamics. At least before I let you out here, I'm curious about this. These, these ACEs, adverse childhood mm -hmm. experiences, mm -hmm. have been going on forever. Mm. Why now? By the way, there was a 1998 original study on this, right? That's correct. Okay, it's 21, 22 years, if you will. Why now? I think that there are speakers, there are physicians, particularly on the West Coast, now you have traction in children's hospitals, mm. that they see this correlation and they're not gonna let it go. I think before everyone was looking and saying, poverty is going to kill, no matter who you are. Right. But ACEs affects affluent, Caucasian families. It's not just the minority community. Everyone? I think it affects everyone, everyone. everyone. Yeah. It, no, no, socioeconomic, socioeconomic geographic, whatever Racial boundaries. Racial boundaries, does no, not. Right. no. I mean, if you, consider, <clears throat> seconds. if you consider the original study, that happened in San Diego, mostly white, college-educated individuals. So you can imagine, layered upon that, having the social determinants of health, like hunger, uh, food insecurity, uh, violence, uh, all those things later on top, we will Those continue really important. to. Sorry for interrupting. We'll continue to look at these issues. Elise and Dr. Lamakia, thank you so much. Let's continue the conversation as part of our Right from the Start NJ initiative. By the way, Dr. Lamakia will not admit this, but he was one of my students in a communication seminar for physicians. How did I do? Uh, you, you're fine, but I noticed you don't say that publicly to people. <laughs> <laughs> that was a non sequitur. We'll be right back right after this. Thanks. <laughs> State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of State of Affairs with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Guarini Institute for Government and Leadership at St. Peter's University, the law firm of Gibbons PC, the Fidelco Group, and by International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825. Promotional support provided by NorthJersey.com and Local IQ, and by Insider NJ.